2015, which is pretty, pretty amazing. There is uh, some uh, interesting stuff. Uh, I, I saw this on Sikkim365.com in the premium section, connected to Texas. And here's, and I mentioned that quote earlier about if you're a blue blood and you have assets, you better be ready to protect them, almost like uh, restricted free agency. Markel Hall on our chat room just mentioned this, that UT, there's at least something out there about how other teams are trying to poach UT's roster staff. Oh, I don't doubt it. Uh, uh, including uh, Barron by Oregon, and again, Xavier Worthy by USC. <laughs> USC's looking for another receiver. It's going to be Addison, most likely. At least that's what you hear. But, man, I'm telling you, um, it's pretty interesting. Uh, Jaden, is it Jaden uh, Barron? Jaden Barron, he was yeah. a Baylor commit. Yeah. Jod yeah. A, no, it's Jod A. Barron. Jod A. Barron yeah. was a Baylor commit, and then I forget the exact timeline. He flipped to Texas at some point and signed with them, obviously. But, yeah, he was a Baylor guy for a while and then, then made that switch. So, yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, I think that's one of the things we've heard from coaches more often than probably any other quote is the recruiting piece now is you're recruiting your own roster. We've heard that from coordinators. We've heard that from head coaches. And, you know, that's an unfortunate side effect of the NIL deal. You know, there's definitely positives to it. I know there's a lot of arguments about it and whatnot. I've just – come to accept it and there are certain elements of it though that I, I refuse to accept and I will say no I don't think that's right I, I don't think it's right that Lincoln Riley can just go grab Jordan Addison for two million dollars I you know I, I think it's right that Jordan Addison sh could, should be able to leave I think it's right that Jordan Addison should be able to make money but just like USC swooping in and grabbing him for two like there's just something that reeks well, with that and it's, it's nothing to do with the player making money before everybody wants to come up with that dumb you know uh, uh, response it has nothing to do with that it's just it just sucks for a lot of people involved. Not for Addison, though, and that's who it's about. So, But, yeah, I mean, Xavier Worthy trying, uh, seeing somebody try to poach him, especially Lincoln Riley, like, no, I don't doubt that for one second. Well, yeah, look, it, um, you know, I, I think about it, it's kind of a weird comparison, but you remember that movie Desperado, Craig? Yeah. Where, like, Antonio Banderas is walking around in the in the town in Mexico and everybody's protecting the drug lord, and they're just good people. And it's why? Because the drug lord's giving them all money. Right. Now, it's great that the poor people have money, but is it good that they did it the way that they're doing it? No. And that's why Antonio Banderas has to come in and clean up the town. <laughs> but I, I think that there's got to be something done with NIL and the transfer portal in which it's not this. Like, there's got to be something, but the problem is you've already made the rules without putting any restrictions on them. So putting restrictions on them and then trying to enforce them is not possible under what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's hard to it's hard to do that. And by the way, I, I saw a little pattern developing uh, over the weekend when the Jordan Addison story was out there. So noticing, like, a lot of people are like, this sucks for college football, and this is the worst, and, man, how awful for Pitt and whatever. And then there's a lot of people congratulating Jordan Addison saying, like, this sucks for Pitt, but, you know, it is good for him or whatever. And then there was a whole crowd that was just like, this is the best. I love chaos. NIL is the greatest. You know, every day it's something new and all that. And I've talked about the little agents of chaos. Like, they don't even really care about the players. or anything. They just want to see, like, change. And they just want to see, like, disruptions. And, and, that, and that, that is pretty much, you know, across the board with probably whatever that they are entertained by. But there is a segment that, that really fights back when you start to – uh, say anything negative about NIL in any way, and they try to like, blanket state me to death of like, yeah. you don't like the players or you don't like them getting money. And it's not that at all. It's just the, the scenario in which it's happened. Um, and you know what I found was pretty much 95% of the people who were like, oh, well, you hate NIL. This is the greatest. We're from USC and Miami, and I wonder why that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonder why those two fan bases they are particularly seem... on one side because yeah. that was very noticeable. I started going through and I was like, wait a second, Kane Head. Trojan boy and like nearly every one of these like 50 whatever responses were Canes or Trojans and so they've made it very clear of where they stand in it and Lincoln Riley said like hey until you stop me I'm gonna do it and I get all that but w just be careful when you read social media that 50 responses might feel like man everybody thinks that NIL is great but then when you realize it's from two fan bases <laughs> And who those, well, those two fan bases are, then it makes a well, little bit more sense that not everybody's on board with it. I want to read this from Markel, who's a UT fan. And Markel, we love the fact you're on our chat room, and you're the one that yeah, brought man, up some of, up? The, some of the scuttlebutt about Xavier Worthy and also Johnny Barron. We may have lost our best secondary player in Barron today as Oregon hmm. offered up 200000 Again, this is all chat room message board. If it's true, it's true. We'll find out. But here's the part where, Markel, I have to check you a little bit. 
NIL is getting out of hands when big brands aren't safe. It doesn't have to be because big brands aren't safe. It's getting out of hand whether the big brands or the middle brands or whatever are safe. I, just if the big brands are fine, then it's okay. I kind of think it's neat that sometimes the big brands get raided. I think it's only fair, and I think if that's, that that's gonna happen. yeah. I think that that's just hey, you can't have it all your way all the time. You, you know, you can't say oh well, we're free to go and poach anybody we want to, but you can't touch our guys. You know, like hey, you, you want to go and grab a guy, then there's a good chance that somebody's probably going to come and grab your guy. I wonder how many phone calls Bijan Robinson's received this off season. Oh, I'm sure. You think a few. I'm sure he has, and I hope he stays at Texas, even if that means they beat Baylor and they beat Oklahoma and whatever. I want him to stick where he's been. I want Texas to get credit for that draft pick. I, you know, um, Xavier Worthy, same thing. But, yeah, I mean, you, you can't have it just one way where they only come in, they don't go out. And and so, yeah, get ready because you know, everybody's going to get dealt with it at some point. That Jody Barron thing is wild, though. Like if that's And I see a lot of the smoke about that uh, $200,000 offer or whatever. Um, that's that's interesting. So I want to see if that's you know finalized it, at some point. But there is some smoke about that. It is not at all surprising to me that the center of nil chaos is in Miami that's and LA. LA. That's my point. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people that do things to be seen there. No, oh, yeah, not because they really care. They care about being seen, and they have money to throw around. And that's that's pretty dangerous when you have people who don't care about what they're doing and they just care about what it looks like. Yeah, we've already seen Miami nearly just you know go off the rails with the uh, situation last week with the basketball player that eventually sorted itself out. And hey, like if Trojans and Hurricanes fans want to be all about it because that's what's going to return them to the glory days, then I mean I totally understand it. But I also think there's unintended consequences sometime. And it was funny I saw a tweet from Colin Cowherd. I don't follow him, but occasionally his his uh, uh, tweets will get into my timeline and he was you know bagging on the the anti-nil folks it's not again not even anti-nil it's anti some parts of nil that's the thing you're not anti-nil you just wish there was some rules you just wish there was a little bit more of a of a process rather than just hey randomly jade baron can just get poached away from texas for 200k by oregon you know like that's what people like hey have him go to oregon for 200 can we have like in a more succinct professional organized way than just the seediness behind the scenes that yes has always gone on but doesn't mean it always has to go on just because it's been that way doesn't mean it has to stay that way but uh but yeah man it's 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 a wild wild west so colin coward was talking about oh all these people there's this doomsday mentality of you know oh nil is going to kill college football when reality miami and usc is is you know being in the mix is, is healthier for college football and i saw somebody point out like yeah i guess they just love georgia bama and the national championship every year i know i don't think people love that but why is it that your point is oddly enough about those two schools like i don't think colin cowher would ever mention the benefits of nil for baylor or tcu or iowa state or San Diego State, or really anybody that's not a blue blood. But he is a blue blood guy, so he's rooting for the blue bloods to be able to just basically go and, hey, our recruiting class suck, doesn't matter. Let's just go buy the best players from over he here. He stuck his head up the USC oh, butthole he, so badly. He has, and Miami's to now an ex extent as well. And, and so, that's fine. Right and he had, a, he had a, a general point, but when you realize who it's coming from and what his intentions are, he doesn't give a damn about anybody that's not like a top 20 program all time. Uh, and especially he loves USC. So I didn't – I thought that that was a little um, – uh, kind of uh, talking out of both sides of his mouth a little bit. Okay, we got to break the 4 o'clock hour. We're a minute into it. We do it 